Hello and welcome. This is Gray Hughes of Gray Hughes Investigates on YouTube. This channel evaluates all aspects of true crime. As you are aware, videos and live streams in this genre often discuss elements of crime that may be disturbing to some viewers. If necessary, take the precautions needed to avoid these feelings. Factual information related to cases is the key to fostering rational true crime discussions. Fortunately, you will find that here. Please hit the like button only once, share the video, and subscribe if you like my content. Thank you very much for watching. Huh? It's a house! Looks like the dog camera is blocked. Oh well. I guess you'll have to wait another night. Well, how's everybody doing? Lori Fisher, Eugene, Dana 1972, AD, Barbara Town. Michelle Nelson, Jerry, Plato, Sweet Caroline, da da da, <laughs> Paisley Dreams, the Blank Slate, Keith Hubert, Pat Hanson, Daphne, Regina Heath, uh, Allie Cake, Cindy, unfortunately, and uh, let's see, <laughs> Rhonda Brand, <laughs> and Rose, there, there you go, all right. And thanks, Plato, for the early super chat. And thank you, Eugenie. Yeah, so I've been working pretty much uh, nonstop on doing my this animation for that I did a long time ago, but this one's way better than uh, it was. But, uh, you know, the payoff won't, won't be jack. That's the sh sad part about making these videos. They take literally, you know, days and days and days and days. And when you put them out there, you get like 12,000 views. And that's about it. Sometimes they get seen by more if people are interested. But we'll see. Maybe I need to come up with a clever uh, title or something, you know. Trick people into watching. Richard Allen is spotted by an alien from Alpha Centauri. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. Yeah, but it's... I don't know. But thanks, uh, Shirt Locker. I think they're good. I made this uh, something similar... I actually made a similar one a long time ago, but the I did, never, was never happy with the animation that I did. So this one's better than that one. Uh, what do you mean blue? What do you, what do you mean blue dot? What are you talking about? And also, uh, like I was saying, last night was when it was a weird night. It was like our worst night we've ever had for uh, Super Chats on, on an actual show, you know, like, so I don't know. I understand the, you know, the economy shitty and everything like that. So if that's, if that's the reason, then so be it, you know. I don't know, I, you know, it does suck. <laughs> you know, you go to the grocery store and eggs and everything that used to cost very little is a hell of a lot more so
No, why would there be any new information, Chris? I, I already solved it. Thanks, Rhonda Brand. Thus, everybody in blue dot, unless they're live. You're live, but still showing blue. Uh, try it again. Maybe go back and look at it again. I mean, I have the big red live thing up on my screen over here. It might have just been that I hadn't started yet. Maybe it takes a minute to kick in, you know. What do you mean? Okay, well, we, haven't, we don't have the affidavit, Chris. If I did, I'd be discussing it, wouldn't I? I'm not sure what blue. I thought when you're live, it's got red on it. Let me see. Well, I guess I don't really get notified of myself. Oh, I see, like a blue dot. Hmm. Yeah, like normally it has like the red kind of like audio looking thing. But is it like that for all of you guys? Hello, Missy Six. Mm, I think blue is just, they're online or something. Okay, yours says red, okay. Right, red means live. So everybody says it's red, okay. So let's do the uh, Elijah Vu press conference. I fixed the audio. Well, I made it louder and things like that. So. And the press conference is from uh, WBAY TV. They had a, a press conference, uh, but they also I don't put their you know their actual story that they tell because that's their, you know, the press conference is a public event. Alright. So here we go. Tony Sheriff, spelling the last name H-E-R-T W-I-G. We serve as a public information officer for this press conference for the Troopers Police Department this evening. From the time he went missing, everyone has been working tirelessly. And he's still kind of low. Wait, hold on. He is our number one focus. Why is he still low? Hold on. Top priority. That's weird. Man, I boosted all these guys up. Is it not? No, I think it might have been this guy. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Let me start over again. It's over here. It was all the way down to four on the volume knob. Here we go. County Sheriff, spelling the last name H-E-R-T-W-I-G. We served as a public information officer for this press conference for the Troopers Police Department this evening. From the time he went missing, everyone has been working tirelessly to find three-year-old Elijah. He is our number one focus, and finding him is the top priority of every single law enforcement officer, volunteer, member of this community, and his family. We have brought in some of the best people in the country over the past week to find him. We want to thank all of our law enforcement partners, specifically our local law enforcement, Division of Criminal Investigations, FBI, local volunteer fire departments, private search and rescue, community search groups, local businesses for food donations, and Wisconsin sheriffs for providing a multitude of... Re and I, I mean, everybody here is aware of this case, right? I mean, I don't have to do a recap or anything. ...resources to our, to our search for Elijah. Tonight you have a couple speakers before you. Uh, first up will be Chief Ben Minard of the Two Rivers Police Department to pro provide an update on search efforts over the past week. We'll also have two members of, the, of Elijah's family who will also speak here tonight. Some things I want to let you folks know as well. When the family comes up here to speak, they're going to be stepping off to the side once they are completed. 
We respectfully request that you do not film them after they are done speaking. The chief will be provide or will have about five minutes for questions after after everyone is done speaking. Um, he will not speak about the current situation involving Katrina Bauer and Jesse View. Most of that is already in the media, and they're currently in custody in the Manitowoc County Jail. Um, when asking questions, we ask that you raise your hand and state your name and which new news organization you are with. Thank you all for being here this evening. My name is Ben Minert. B-E-N-M-E-I-N-N-E-R-T. I'm the chief of the Two Rivers Police Department. A child missing. Hey, can you go, whoever has that green, the dot issue, can you do a screenshot and send it to me? Uh, email it to me, like, while we're live, you know, like, you know, I don't know how you would show it to, uh, do a screenshot of it on your end, but uh, then email it to me for any amount of time is everyone's worst nightmare. That's why we're here today. Elijah, a three-year-old boy, has been missing now for a week today. For the past week, we've utilized hundreds of resources, worked around the clock in our attempts to bring Elijah home. Right now, I'd like to bring everybody just up to speed with our search for Elijah and how that went. Elijah was reported a week ago today, like I said, around 11 a.m. in the 30, 3900 block of Mishicot Road here in Two Rivers. Everyone searched for Elijah on that day, and I mean everyone. Our police department first responders responded out. It's not necessarily an unusual incident to have a missing child. Usually we find them right away. Nearly immediately we realized that we needed more resources. Every officer, including myself, was out searching that day for Elijah. When we needed more help, we reached out to the fire department and our Department of Public Works. Soon after that, we got some information stating that Elijah may have gone missing at 8 a.m. When we received that information, my assistant chief, Melissa Wiesner, She's a former lead investigator, and she's worked many child cases. I entrusted her, and I knew she had the wherewithal to reach out immediately to places like a, a Child is Missing, our National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. She put out numerous alerts, including missing and endangered alerts, ring neighborhood alert, uh, alerts, and local emergency alerts. That included an Amber Alert. I know there's been some question about an Amber Alert on that day and why. This child was three years old and was reported missing on a cold winter temperature day with only a blanket and possibly light clothing. And we knew at that time possibly three to four hours. I define that as endangered. I immediately reached out with the assistance of my staff to the Division of Criminal Investigation. This is not about me, this has always been about bringing Elijah home, and quickly. They led that investigation into his whereabouts with the support of our FBI. We also utilized almost any boat, UTV, drone, canine, and even National Guard helicopters to search for Elijah. Unfortunately, Elijah wasn't found. Following that day, we had a press conference. I know people were frustrated with that. I too was frustrated with that. Um, we had a lot of misinformation going around on Facebook, through social media, and just in general. We felt it necessary that we had to lay out factual information of the case and bring everybody up to date to that point. We also established a tip line and got that out to the public at that time. That has been beneficial and crucial to this investigation and search. Since the conference, I have personally provided media releases 
daily, if not multiple times during the day, to bring our public up to date and remain transparent. Those leads, those investigations, everything we've taken as tips have led to searching our neighborhoods, searching all our waterways, aerial and foot canvases, both urban and rural, throughout Manitowoc County and even beyond. We've searched Wisconsin landfills and quarries, and we've even had additional leads in Wisconsin Dells. In addition to all those search efforts, I am aware of other investigations taking place. I can confirm Elijah's mother, Katrina Bauer, uh, Bauer is in jail on charges of child neglect and obstructing. Katrina's boyfriend, Jesse Bang, is in jail on charges of child neglect. And I do know that it, Elijah's father has also been incarcerated at Oshkosh Correctional Institute in unrelated matters since 2023. I also understand that the public would like more information on those first two individuals I mentioned. However, I'm unable to discuss those matters because it is an ongoing investigation and I don't want to jeopardize those cases. I want to thank the various local, state, federal agencies as well as all our fire and EMS and even those private uh, resources that have helped along the way. Thank you to everyone in the community. They've provided food and drinks towards all these efforts. And thanks to all those private search efforts. On Saturday, we announced a Crime Stoppers Award of $1,000 for information leading to the location of Elijah and have since provided other ways that people can donate here in the community or abroad. Currently, we have those established as coming to our customer service here at City Hall, our police department, and I'm also working on establishing an online route for people to do so. When that becomes available, I will reach out to everybody and let you know. Today, the FBI has now provided an additional reward up to $15,000 for information leading to the location and return of Elijah Vu and or the arrest and conviction of any individual or individuals responsible or involved with his disappearance. We have posters here that state just that. You know who's responsible. In addition to all those search efforts, Elijah Boo's family has been coordinating their own search efforts throughout Manitowoc County. They're here today and they'd like to provide a statement. I'd like to bring those members of Elijah's family out. Hey, let me ask you, do you guys think it's possible that, <laughs> I mean, I hope they're not suggesting that Elijah was somehow abducted and the parents or the Jesse and the mother or whatever have nothing to do with it. I mean, the odds of that would be similar to, well, I guess it's possible. Anything's possible, you guys. That it was just horrible neglect, but but even Jesse said he, he locked the door all up high and everything like that. How would a three-year-old get out of that house? You know? I don't think there's any chance that uh, they're, they're not part of what happened, especially why would the mother lie about it? Or, you know, so just now when they said, hey, if you can lead us to a conviction of who did it, well, what do you mean who did it? You guys know who did it, right? to make those statements for you. Okay. On behalf of my family, we stand before you today with heavy hearts burdened by an unmatchable situation. The pain is indescribable, a torment no family or child should ever face. We cannot express the depth of our sorrow, nor the desperation that consumes us. As each moment passes without news of Elijah's safety, to 
to anyone who may have information about Elijah's whereabouts. We plead with you to please come forward. Your courage, your compassion, your willingness to speak up may hold the key to Elijah's safe return. Every piece of information will, bring, will help bring us one step closer to bring Elijah back, back to our family where he belongs. To those who may have information, your assistant is just not a contribution, but a lifeline of hope. Elijah is a joyful and curious boy, full of life and love. He is a precious child who deserves every chance of happiness, and his absence is deeply felt by all who know and love him. Every day without him feels like a piece of our hearts is missing. We long to hear his laughter, to witness his curiosity, and to feel the warmth of his embrace. The emptiness left in his absence is a void that cannot be filled by anything else. Elijah, if you can hear us, know that you are deeply missed and loved, and we will not rest until you are safely back in our arms. Lastly, we want to express our Thank deepest you, gratitude to law enforcement, government agency, and all involved in the search operation. The support of the community, the dedications of volunteers, the generosity of businesses, and the kindness showing through food and monetary donations, and so much more. We thank each and every one of you for your role in our search for Elijah. Please keep Elijah in your thoughts and prayers. And if you have any information, please come forward. We believe that with the help of the community, we... I mean, something nefarious happened, right? Because his shoe was found at the, at the garbage can there. I mean, and then he's just missing. So uh, I, I just think it's more likely, like tremendously more likely, that one of those two had something to do with it. I mean, it just, I mean, come on. <laughs> you, you heard all the crazy crap that was going on in that house and probably just took it a little too far. We can bring Elijah back home together. Thank you. Thanks, Kami. Um, I, uh, Turkey English is not good. So, and I want everybody to be patient with me. So, and I just try that I can. So, right now, I would like to thank you for everybody to help my family to search for my grandson, Hovi, to today. So, everybody know, right, we are ready for, so, and I really, I want to thank you for the officer, or all the fire department people, all the people living in two city here, how uh, to search for our grandson, our baby for one week right now. So, yeah, I really thank you for everybody. So, but right now, so I want everybody to uh, continue to help us to look for my grandson. I want my grandson to be home with my family. So I want everybody to continue, don't stop, just searching for my baby Elijah. We want him to be safe and with my family and we love my grandson. Thank you for it. I'd like to thank the Boo family for being here. I have time for some questions as the sheriff announced earlier. I won't be able to talk about the investigation of the case, but I will answer whatever questions I can. Chief Emily Tessic from Fox 11. When was the last time someone other than Jesse Bang saw Elijah? 
What was the, the last time he was seen by someone other than somebody who was arrested in the case? Right, we've gotten that question a lot. Um, I appreciate that question. What I will say is um, the reason that we've been seeking out to the public to request all the information that we are is because we are following up on every lead, tip, etc. And that is one of those things. You know, we want to know every time, any time that Elijah was seen during this past week. So we will continue to follow up on all leads, any leads, and that's what's... Wait a minute. So there's people out there that you guys actually, like 12% of you, believe that uh, the mother and this Jesse guy have nothing to do with it. <laughs> My God, you guys. Holy shit. Leading us into the locations that we've been. Okay, just, what was the most recent, I guess, before he disappeared? I can't comment directly on the investigation, but I can tell you that we are following up on all those and we continue to ask for those. Chief, Chief Rita Jones, Fox 6. Have you all Hang received, on, just a second. Rita, go Rita ahead Jones, first. Fox 6, Milwaukee. Have you all received any information that indicates that Elijah is still alive, whether that be any surveillance or rain camera? I'm not going to speculate on anything at this point, but what I will say is all our efforts are for bringing home Elijah safe. No, I think uh, it's just the troll count. Like right now, they just show up every night. It's like a party for them, waiting for something. I mean, I know this is a true thing that I'm telling you right here. I believe that all our efforts thus far have done just that. We've reached out to hundreds and hundreds of resources over this week's time span and they're all dedicated to bringing him home and will continue to follow up on any leads to do so. Chief Kendall Keyes of UISN 12, do police believe Elijah left that residence on- Well, the vote's still up there, it's still going. But what do you mean uh, you're, well, you, can, you can say for a fact? Do you have inside knowledge? I mean, I believe it's a fact, but- you know. Again, I can't speculate. I will say that again, when we're talking about the Amber Alert that we put out, People wanted me to speculate on an abduction versus endangered. At this point, what I do know is a child was missing in cold temperatures, you know, winter temperatures, in relatively little clothing and possibly a blanket. That's what we're searching for, and we'll continue to search for until I get some answers. You know, you asked for surveillance video. Has there been? I mean, I guess you could make an argument that he was tortured, so he escaped on his own, something like that. Any video that shows him on his own walking, anything like that? I can't comment directly on that. What I will say is if that is in fact the case, I know that we have DCI agents, FBI agents, and local police doing just that because we're following up on all tips, any tips that relate to Elijah Blue and his, I just ended his uh, return. Chief Perry of Postalapos, NBC 26, you mentioned that there are search efforts in other parts of the state. Can you speak to what those have included? You mentioned here we've been searching landfills and waterways. You said that there have been searches going on in Wisconsin. Devils, what have those looked like? Well, I mean, the hearing tomorrow is at 1, right? I mean, that's what I heard, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. One place said, tomorrow the 27th. Wednesday the 27th, one of the articles out there, and I was thinking, wait, I missed it? Because I always thought it was the 28th. <laughs> well, tomorrow's Wednesday the 28th, not the 27th. I think what I can tell you is that you've seen and you guys have been broadcasting searches of landfills, searches of our waterways. We know that people have been out into the Dells. Those are all things that we're following up on leads on. Any lead we'll leave no rock unturned. We're going to follow up on those leads because ultimately our goal is again, we want to bring Elijah home. So it doesn't matter how small that lead or tip may be, please bring that to us, contact our tip line because we will get people out there to follow up on any lead, any lead whatsoever. I think we're gonna go back over here because he was asking earlier. Uh, you had spoke about misinformation before. How does misinformation spread specifically in this case on Facebook? hinder this specific uh, investigation and then and just an investigation in general. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? The misinformation on Facebook, how does that hinder an investigation, this one specifically and just in, in general? That in particular doesn't necessarily hinder the investigation. What it does is it hinders all the efforts within the community. Because again, Look at that. Same our percentage. primary <laughs> efforts here are to bring a home safe. Yeah. And if the public's that's getting awesome. misinformation, that's gonna lead them awry. I want them to know the facts. Our department takes pride in remaining transparent here in Two Rivers, and that's why I'm putting out all these news releases. That's why I'm having a news conference with you today is because I want the public to know the facts just. Isn't that awesome, you guys? Look at that. It's almost the same percentage. 
I'm sure people like Zozo put yes because that's what she does. You know, that's her humor, even though it's not funny because you can't see it. But uh, see that? Look at the percentage up there. That's how many trolls just show up. The facts and be up to date with those facts, so they. Can so right in their their thing, uh, you know, tonight we're doing another show where you only have two days left of the month. If you're out there and you have the ability to help support the Great Hughes Investigates YouTube channel, that'd be great. Maybe consider becoming a channel member, etc. Okay, but uh, we're woefully behind after the last couple days. Continue their own searches. We're appreciative of those. I'm also appreciative you, of all Kennedy, the resources we're that stuff. we're focusing on throughout Manitowoc and beyond. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, based on that information and that hearing uh, Candley Woodward Stone said I believe he went missing before the 20th reminds me of Quentin Simon case can you talk about the toll this has taken on I'm sorry can we, can we take another question over here uh, I'd Samantha, like to spread this around Samantha Cavalli WBAY News um, have you been able to find any items that Elijah was last wearing we have video of people collecting evidence potentially might be that dinosaur shoe that was missing Right. I, I can't comment on exactly what has been taken or would not be taken. Um, I don't know the investigation uh, issues there as far as how that plays out. What I do know is that we're continuing to search for any of those items that you're talking about. So basically, you guys have all seen the photo of Elijah. We've mentioned that he may have had dinosaur print shoes, a red plaid bank blanket, and, and the clothing description. That'd be cool if they let you... Like, based on a person's answer, you can remove them from the channel. <laughs> That'd be great. We are still looking for anybody that has tips on any of that stuff because we will follow up on it and we will try to, to figure out if it is related to Elijah Vu. Where do you go from here? Is there still... I'm teams? sorry, can we go here? Last question. Yeah, Chief Miner. Uh, Cecilia Toe from Local 5 News. Um, a week after he's gone missing, uh, how confident are you that Elijah is still alive? Again, I'm not going to speculate. What I'm going to do is continue to search for Elijah Vu. We are doing everything in our efforts, believing that he is still out there. We will find him and we will bring him home. That's what we're searching for. And really, anybody in the community, anybody, anybody beyond, this is not related to just Two Rivers. This is abroad. So even outside of the Two Rivers community, I ask everybody in the state and beyond, really just start looking at your property. That's what you can do as, as a person not right here physically. If you're looking for something to do, first check your property, then get involved in some of these other. Now it's somebody that asked like 47,000 questions and probably bugs the hell out. Search efforts, that would help us a great deal. And again, reach out to that tip line, come back to us and provide us with any tips and we will follow up on them. Do investigators have a reason to believe at I'm this sorry. point that there's anyone else involved in this disappearance? <clears throat> I was just gonna read. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. That, that was the last question. I will just close with, um, I'd like to thank you, everyone, for being here today. You've heard pleas from the family now. Um, we echo those same pleas. Since our number one, our priority has always been, I keep repeating it, to bring Elijah home. I'm asking everyone to continue in their searches, continue to contact our tip line, um, report anything, anything at all that you feel may help us bring Elijah home. Everyone has been, has been affected by this deal, uh, this incident a great deal. Um, this is a close-knit Two Rivers community. We're, we're all devastated. We want answers. You want answers. Um, I know efforts of our city staff, our citizens, and those beyond our city, city limits are going to continue to work together and we'll bring Elijah home. Thank you. Yeah, so that was pretty, uh, you know, I don't know if it has a lot of extra information in it or anything like that, but it just is what it is, you know, if, uh, they're still looking for him. I guess they, I'd like to know what they think. I mean, they must believe that the mother and that Jesse guy have something to do with why the child's not around. You know, especially given the treatment he was having, right? But I guess you could make an argument to say something like, oh, he, he uh, you know, left after being tortured and then somehow got lost and died somewhere. Or 
left because he got tortured and then some wacko offender picked him up and took him somewhere. You know, something like that. I mean, that would be so odd to that solo. Hey, Bama Forever, how's it going? Your head's going to explode? What happened? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it looked like there was uh, 112 voted for the troll one, and there was 24%, so you figure, ah, oh, there's at least 30 trolls watching. Could you imagine people with that, like, you know, slow of a life where every day they can't wait to get out their popcorn and sit around with their other troll buddies and watch Gray Hughes' channel and just wait for something to happen? Ridiculous. 14 pieces of legislation. Oh boy. <laughs> that doesn't sound too uh, interesting, to be honest with you. Let's see. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, well, it's really, uh, it's crazy that people do that. I mean, they spend every waking day thinking about me. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's close to being a stalker, don't you think? I mean, I, I don't think about them at all until I do the show, and then it's like, oh, <laughs> here they are again. It's amazing. Uh, you know, the places they all hang out, I have no ability to go see. Yeah, it's crazy. So it looks like the uh, tomorrow is going to be the hearing. Oops. Tomorrow's the hearing in the Koberger case for, um, you know, determining when the trial is going to be. And it, what I was so I was actually shocked out of I was actually shocked, <laughs> to be honest with you, during that last. Um, hearing when the prosecution agreed that yeah sometime in 2025 yeah like we we agree like I don't, I don't know what they're doing like why would you do that that's strange and so I hope the judge I mean I, I I'd have a hard time also believing that the judge would contradict or go against both of the in both the defense and the prosecution on moving it to 2025 because it should be this year I mean there's no I mean it should be like fall it should be very easy for people to get this going and I think if it gets delayed to 2025 it's probably 2026 2027 it's a long time But uh, yeah, and two days from now is our last night of the month, our donation night, and I'm trying to get uh, get rolling. We were doing okay for a February, but then you know there was three days this month where I wasn't even here, um, and then we just had two days that were as if I wasn't here in a row. So we're really low. <laughs> I mean, we're so I'd like to I don't know try to end the month strong somehow. I don't know if that's possible, but uh, if we can, we can. If we can't, we can't. But man, we got to get uh, going on Identifinders International again. I'm, I need to send more money over to them, and then I need to get some new, you know, our scholarship fund money, some money sent into that too. But, but at the rate we're going, it's um, it's not looking good. So, again, if you're out there and you have the ability to help, that would be fantastic. Anyways, what do you guys think about uh, tomorrow? You think the judge will make one in the winter this year or go all the way to 
the spring of 2025. And we'll definitely cover it tomorrow. I'll do a live stream. Hey, thanks, Peggy O. There you go. Look at that. The first super on a live stream. And that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and so when people support the channel, help support the channel. And it allows me to take a huge chunk of it and give it to various uh, charities. Last year we did 58,000, which is pretty good. I want to know the truth about Moscow. Tired of, well, the truth is what I've been telling you on the show for a long time. There isn't any secrets and lies. You're listening. If you believe there's secrets and lies, that's because you're watching a clown or some guy from the UK that just pedal in. That's what they sell to you guys. And a lot of you are gullible enough to actually believe it, you know. Koberger is the killer in the case. I've gone over it. He, There's no out for him. Okay? The truth is, if you go, if you're somebody, if you go over the probable cause document and stuff that's out there, known, and you go over it, 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 you'll realize that just even that document alone, it's hard for Koberger to get out of it. It's him. Right. I think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every time, you know, you can go over it a million times and it never gets weaker. It actually feels stronger every time you go over it. Oh yeah, this is what I've been working on here. This is the uh, Delphi thing, but uh, let me let me see if I can remember. I mean, look at all the stuff I have just for that case. I mean, it's crazy. All these, every pin on here is connected to that. A lot of work. Hey, thanks, Barbara Town. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think I'm probably going to do the PCA again at some point. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, it's great to go over and think, oh, yeah, you forget about little ish things in there. Because I've just been so focused on this area here because it's so devastating for Koberger. It does seem now that, that he comes out and goes this way instead of this direction. You know. um, so I'd have to go back out there and drive around backwards. It'd be kind of fun to try to do that, actually. <laughs> I think I could just do it one, one shot. A little harder, though. You'd have to... I think that would indicate, however, that he probably just would go here and turn right. Because um, you would get on this road and drive until you have to turn, right? Because look how you would just drive, and then you, you would get here and turn right if you had to come the other direction. You wouldn't want to come around the corner and go, oh, yeah, the stop sign. Right? You'd come around the corner and just go right, boom, and then left on Elantra, come around, boom. Just like that. Yeah, we don't know where he ditched the other information. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I think the strongest thing is just knowing that, okay, he's got, you know, he's got the white Elantra. He said he was driving around late at night. And right around in this area at 326 on Indian Hills Drive, it's driving around. And then right here, uh, the vehicle turns left on Snyder Avenue. And then, then at 328, which is absolutely perfectly timed up, we timed all of these in a car driving. Hey, thanks, Joseph Brennan. And drove by the A&W right here. 
And when it drove by the AMW, it filmed a car with no front license plate, just like Brian Koberger's, and it was a white Elantra. And then it comes around like this. I think the first time it comes in, I believe it comes in like this. Right. And then when it exits, uh, well, I'll have to go listen to that again. I'll have to go try to figure that out on my own and get my own thing so it's in my brain. But either way, it just, it comes in the first time like this for sure. It comes in. I mean, I guess it is possible, but the timing that it went around like this, but the timing, it can't be because it's 328 driving by the A&W here. And then it enters the area at 329, which is the Linda Lane camera right here. And then it turns and comes in. And then you have it like 333, uh, something like that. The first loop back here comes back around. And then it likely sits here for a minute. And then I guess apparently it goes out like this and goes this direction and then loops around and then comes back in and then at 339 and then there's an 18 minute gap. Now the thing is I just got other information recently where it shows that that image that we were talking about was over actually on this side over here. That, that photograph was taken on this road, that one still frame which looks like an Elantra, and it's over here at 345. Okay, so it's right over here. And so that means when it got here, it likely, you know, just cut across at some point. If it got here, because we had it, when we timed it, it was like 334, right? 344 right here. So then it probably came around and maybe just cut through a parking lot, maybe didn't drive up to here. It, it still could have. I mean, it doesn't take a long time to drive up here, but that's where the the image was taken. In fact, it was uh, not there, it was right here, somewhere around in that area. Hey, thank you. She sells seashells and Misha. All right, so then it came back and that's why that route's longer. I think he was just trying to kill more time because I think, uh, you know, he just kept looking into the house over and over and over again and there wasn't, the lights weren't off. And then when he came back at the, on the 357, I think, or 350, maybe 358. Oh, there goes my stomach. Comes around <laughs> like this and then uh, looks up there. Maybe the lights are off, but maybe they're still not. And he drives out, but if he waited again in this area, because I always think he waits two or three minutes in these spots, that's what I've been saying. Just like a, another YouTuber miraculously uh, had the same thing. Uh, came up like this and then turned. And then um, it could be that the DoorDash driver was there at that point because that's right around four o'clock. And maybe that's why he decided to drive away. It could be that he was parked here and saw headlights over here, kind of turn and go in. And then he was curious and he drove out. And then he came back again at 404, he enters the area. And then he drives back here and then he does a three point turn there and then comes back again, stops in this area for a moment. Maybe he's looking into the house to see what was going on with the delivery or whatever that was. And then he goes this direction, does a three point turn here, comes back around. And then the vehicle has to be the white Elantra missing its front license plate has to be inside of this red area right here for 12 minutes from 408 to 420. And inside of that 12 minutes is when Brian Koberger entered the home. And that's why there's a knife sheath left on the bed. See, here's the thing is when the white Elantra missing its front license plate was there for 12 minutes during that exact same time, a knife sheath was 
deposited on the bed that has Brian Koberger's DNA on it. How does he get away from that? How does he escape that? That during the 12 minutes that his white Elantra had to have been stopped because you see it go back around there and then you don't see it leave till 420. You see it coming around at 408, 407, parking at 408. And then inside of that 12 minutes, his DNA is deposited on the bed on a, uh, on a knife sheet. Can anybody um, explain that to me? Hey, look at that. Who's your mama? 11 months. <laughs> Well, thank you. Come on, somebody. Somebody give me an explanation. How do you, do you get out of that? That for in a 12-minute period where a white Elantra missing its front license plate is parked outside the residence, a 12 minutes in which four people were murdered, Ethan Chapin, Zanuck Ronaldo, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonzalez, that during that same 12-minute time that those four individuals were murdered, a knife sheath with DNA matching the person who owns the white Elantra. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, just that there is, would be enough for me to go, okay, good night. It's over. I always thought that looks like a gun, that shape. Oh, handle and then a. Like a revolver almost. Well, your guys' uh, chat rate just died. Hey, thanks, Serious Black. Yeah, but I think we should go over it again, and I'll probably use the, not tonight, but uh, coming up soon, a go over a, a night where we're just kind of going over the, uh, you know, the whole probable cause again, but with all that other information that we got too. Hey, look at that, it's J.K. Hey, freaks, how's everyone doing? What the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. What the hell is this? Yeah, that, that was one of the funnier... If you don't know what that's from, we have an emoji that says, What the hell... I think it says, What the hell is this? I was just doing a show and somebody... That was their first comment. They came in and said, What the hell is this? A little bit like what Zozo types in on a nightly basis. What are we doing? What is this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but I, it was funny, though. It was funny. So we, I just thought, man, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. So we made a... Uh, there it is. What the hell is this? Right there. How's it going, uh, Eugenie? With the house and everything. <clears throat> oh, there's serious plaques. You gotta get that sound effect. Slowly. Yeah, Love that was when pretty you funny. Speak BK to us. Justice for these victims, heart. Yeah. And freaks. How's everyone doing? What the hell is this? Do you sound like that? And one. <laughs> Do you sound like that, uh, J. Case? Yeah. So L101 came from, you know how people say LOL? And then we were reading letters from Chris Watts. May his name never be said again. Uh, but we were, doing, we were reading emails, and some lady was talking about some she could cook or something, and then said, she wrote LOL, but Ada said 101. But we had already had, she read it out loud and said uh, 101. 
And I go, no, that's LOL. But we had already had L LOL because it was like when you know when people type LOL, are they really laughing out loud? Or or so the L was literally okay. So then we switched L LOL to L one oh one uh because of her saying one oh one. Yeah, so it's L one oh one. Yeah, that's where that comes from. So that really it means literally laughing out loud. And that always reminds me of my comment when somebody types in, Man, today I crushed my thumb with a sledgehammer. R-O-L-F-M-A-A-O. You know? And, you know, I always think of those people as somebody that should be put into a mental ward. Like if you crush your thumb with a sledgehammer and you're rolling on the floor laughing your ass off, uh, you've got a problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have a serious problem. Hey, thanks, K-Me. I think we've done, um, out of all, don't you think that we've done the best work on the Idaho 4 case here than any place else out there? I mean, we, and when, see, the thing is, is, you, well, you're just doing what the state said, Gray. Well, I'm actually out there proving it, and it's easy. You know how, why? Because it's, it's real. That's why it's easy to prove. I don't have to go look for a third dimensional, um, <laughs> like, alien that you guys are looking at. I mean, it's just crazy. Thanks, Just Ann Oki. Yeah, I mean, I think we've nailed it here. But it, it's amazing, though, the views. I mean, I still I get a lot of views on some of them, but you would think some of my videos that I've made on this case would have 200,000 views on them because they are, when you watch it, it's clear, it makes sense, it's interesting, but somehow they just don't make it out of the algorithm because it wasn't sensationalistic enough. It's to determine the, uh, what day the trial is. And the last time they had a hearing, the prosecution even agreed. Yeah, 2005. Yeah, tw 25, I mean. That sounds good. Hey, waving hand. No, that, no, that, <laughs> that, that Idaho 4 case has just as many, if not way more, bozos than the Delphi case. Yeah. Uh, as you call them, Ivan. There are way, I mean, because the Idaho 4 case, believe it or not, is way bigger than the Delphi case. And uh, they, there's just so many more. It's, it's crazy. There's a lot of people out there that I think they want to go date Koberger almost, the way they write. Like, he's just so, he's so hot. Well, thanks, Susie B. Yeah, I mean, he edited me where I, I'm shorter speaking, so, you know, you know how I talk. Uh, he got me like ding, 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 so he edited it up, but um, I think the times that I've been on Court TV, I've spoken pretty clearly, you know. I'm trying, I want to do Court TV again on another topic. Because I, I actually think um, you know that video the last time I was on Court TV? That's one of their highest viewed videos in a long time. And it just shows you that people really want to see that kind of stuff. You know, the factual information laid out in a graphical way to kind of make them go, ah, I see, there you go. Oh, they should. Yeah, let him stay at their house for a couple weeks while he, ch while he checks out their birthing hips. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, well, uh, let's see. I wasn't even, that was an unscheduled stop on this one.
but I think we need to jump back in and I think I'm going to do uh, my own audio just to get everything precisely timed because when you hear the audio it's going to be coming down the car will be right in this area and then uh, then I think I'll just I'm going to have to go back out there and drive around and go the, the opposite direction or something oh yeah the birthing hips yeah All right, what we're going to do now, however, is go over to those Westerman documents. So there's two different ones. One's like a brief. Uh, we'll see what's in this one and then Ben read the other one too. And thank thank you, Big Saul sent these to me. He's, he's got a connection out there. I don't know. If you want to send me an email, Peggy O, but I, I think I'm almost done doing cold cases that nobody's looking at. Doesn't work. Used to. On November 21st, 2023, the state of Indiana charged the defendant with the crime of conversion, a Class A misdemeanor. The state specifically alleges that between August 1st, 2023 and October 5th, 2023, Westerman did knowingly or intentionally exert unauthorized control over the property of Andrew Baldwin to wit images. So he took images and, and it's apparently unauthorized control over. And there's people arguing against that. What, what do you mean? <laughs> That's exactly what that is. Although um, he was authorized, okay? Because he already had the Franks Memorandum so you guys all know this, right? In the Delphi case, when I headed out to Delphi, uh, just be as I was leaving or driving there, a Frank's memorandum came out. It was a document that I mentioned was going to be coming out earlier in the month when I was in Idaho. And, the, you know, the, I, the Odin document is what people call it. So it's actually like it's a memorandum in support of a Frank's hearing. But it just went on and on about Odinism and all that crap. But with the Odin document came exhibits, and they were crime scene photos, etc. Mitch Westerman was given that. He already had all that information. So just keep that in mind here. The probable cause affidavit in this case was filed along with the information. So this is the case against Westerman, a, a sideshow case here. The probable cause affidavit in this case was filed along with the information. The probable cause affidavit essentially states that at some point during the charged uh, time frame, Westerman was in the office and or conference room of Baldwin. Westerman was alone and took photos of photographs. So it says Westerman was alone and took photos of photographs. So he really took digital images of photographs or documents that were left on the conference room table. Westerman did not have permission to take the photos. Oh, and you, you know what, you guys? One of the images that's out there has a mouse pointer on it. That means it's on a computer when he took a picture of it. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. This is or I don't, actually not... Uh, this is, it's just... It's beyond belief that this happened right here. That you brought a trusted guy named Westerman. Like he used to work for Baldwin. He goes back there and he goes into this conference room and looks both ways and then starts taking pictures of the crime scene photos. He took digital images of the photo photographs or documents that were left on the conference room table. Westerman did not have permission to take the photos that Baldwin was not present and did not give Westerman permission to take the photos. The photos that Westerman took were photographs of crime scene photos from the Richard Allen murder case. But here's the thing, everybody, he already had those. They came with the um, Odin document. They were already in it. So why would he need to go to Baldwin's office and take photographs of the same images he already had? Can anybody answer that one with a straight face? 
The photos that Westerman took were photographs of crime scene photos from the Richard Allen murder case. The information is defective under code 3534 1-4 because the information fails to re recite facts that constitute an offense and must be dismissed under Indiana 3534 1-4. The defendant contends that if every statement in the charging information and the probable cause affidavit were true, the conduct does not rise to the level of conduct necessary to support a conviction for Class A misdemeanor conversion. In order for Westerman to be found guilty of conversion, the state would have to prove the following elements beyond a reasonable doubt. One, Westerman knowingly and or intentionally exerted unauthorized control over property. Well, he did intentionally do it, right? The property was images owned by Baldwin. The information in the case is uh, deficient because it fails to show that Westerman exerted unauthorized control over property and that the property was actually owned by Baldwin. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's unauthorized and you took the pictures. I mean, what are you talking about? That sounds like a moron that wrote that. What do you, what do you mean? Uh, that property was actually owned by Baldwin so he couldn't have exerted unauthorized control over it. Well, no, you stole it by taking pictures of it. It's insane. Indiana Code 3543-4-1 defines exert control over property as used in the chapter. Exert control over property means to obtain, take, carry, drive, lead away, conceal. You mean like taking pictures? obtain, abandon, sell, convey, encumber, or possess property, or secure, transfer, or extend a right to property. The allegation in the probable cause affidavit and the information failed to show that Westerman did any of the actions required to meet the definition, exert control over property. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're talking about. The charging documents likely come closest to meeting the definition by implying that Westerman obtained the images. This argument fails. Well, he stole them. If, if you want to believe your story, he stole them, right? Westerman did not obtain the actual images in Baldwin's office. Westerman only obtained images of the images. Um... Oh, I, God, are you guys trying to like get out on a technicality like that? He's only, because he took images of the images. It wasn't the original image. What a joke. Oh, what an idiot. Are you kidding me? This whole defense team, this is their way their brain works. This kind of lunacy here. Look at that. Westerman did not obtain the actual images. Westerman only obtained images of the images, you see? He, he didn't take them, he just took photographs of them. Oh man, what a, what a joke. There is nothing in the charging document that states that Westerman ever touched the photographs. Uh, this will not, uh, the judge, the, the, everyone will see right through this. What a weird and similarly idiotic argument as the rest of the defense team does. There's nothing in the charging document that states that Westerman ever picked the photographs up. There's nothing in the charging documents that states that Westerman ever possessed the actual images. He simply took photos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, he's just, he was just in there taking photos, everybody. He was just, you know, just taking random photographs and just happened to get them perfectly centered on crime scene photos. He simply took photos. Taking photos is not in the statutory definition of exerting control over property. Well, yeah, see what they're trying to do is uh, absolute technicality here. I don't think that that was the, I think it's obvious that wasn't the, um, the spirit of the law. There are numerous examples of analogous behavior that are obviously not conversion. For example, if an individual goes to a museum and takes a picture of a painting with, uh, well, yeah, but here's the difference. You had a 
a uh, non, you know, like a, it was supposed to be a gag order on the case. And these are images that were not supposed to be released. So there's a difference there. Um, pictures of a painting with a no photo sign next to it. Has that person committed conversion? Of course not. If someone takes a photo over their neighbor's fence of the flower garden, have they converted their neighbor's flowers? Ah, oh, jeez. Again, of course not. Now, if the museum patron takes the painting off the wall or the neighbor picks the flower, then they are committing conversion. The difference in the example is whether or not the control is being exerted over the property of another. In this example, I don't, I don't think this is going to, I totally get what they're trying to say, but it's not, I don't think it's going to fly. The state has also failed to show that Westerman exerted control over property of Baldwin. There has been no allegations made in the charging information that the images were of anything that was copyrighted or trademarked. To the contrary, the allegations are that Westerman took photos of images that were from the discovery in a murder case. There are not images that are owned by Baldwin. These are images that are possessed by other people involved in the murder case. Other attorneys may have these images. The state has these images. The police likely have these images. These images may be possessed by the trial court. Baldwin may own the paper that the images were printed on. However, as previously stated, there is nothing in the charging information to indicate that Westerman controlled the actual paper. I think the fact that there was a gag order, it sort of, um, I mean, I get, I get what their argument is, but it just seems like it's against the spirit of it. Like, for example, if there's digital images that somebody owns and you sneak into an office and you take photographs of those very same digital images, there's really no difference of that than grabbing them and taking them. It's the same thing. It's stealing them with, by using digital. It's, I think it's like conversion by digital processing or whatever you want to call it. All right, you guys, let's, let's see if we can try to do another wave here. See if we can get the, get going tonight on the, well, we don't really have a goal. I don't, I'm, done doing the goals but if you'd like to help support the channel the you like uh the stuff that we do on the show uh, i'd appreciate it if you guys that can if you can help support the channel that'd be awesome thank you we're getting near the end of the month westerman's case is very similar to coleman versus vukovic baldwin is similar in similar to the company with the software license Simply possessing something legally yourself does not mean that you own it for the purpose of conversion statute. By processing discovery, Baldwin is similarly situated to the company that has license for the software. If anything, I guess it's up here. The Court of Appeals has analyzed a civil case involving an employee using the software of a former employer. The court held former employees possession of software did not constitute conversion or trespass as to the employer. Employer did not own the software and instead licensed it and former employee illicit copying of the software did not impair employer's ability to use it. Wow. That's <laughs> and now that you read that, I mean, if that's something that that's crazy right there. Westerman's case is similar. If anything, the company that actually pays for the software license likely has a stronger claim to ownership than any attorney that receives evidence. All right, so maybe that's what the issue is. Is I think what you would say is that he, he it was conversion of property owned by the state of Indiana that was being 
um, you know, sort of marshaled under the gag order at Baldwin's office. Well, thanks, Ivan. <laughs> Whenever I say it, it just, just goes... <coughs> but thank you. But you didn't understand what part. What part didn't you understand? It doesn't matter. The whole watermarking thing that people do online is stupid. They just do it for advertising. You know, like, hey, everybody, I'm the one that got this. That doesn't mean a damn thing. They don't own it. They don't. There's nothing... Uh, which part didn't you understand? The software license part. Not sure what that argument was trying to say. Eh, it was just sort of like, uh, let's see. The court held former employees' possession of software did not constitute conversion or trespass. So he was like, there might have been an employee that had software and he kept it even after he didn't work there anymore. And they're saying that, um, you know, they've sort of ruled in the ex-employee's favor, really. Wave start. Because the employer didn't own it. They were leasing it. But you would say that the actual software company that leased it is who the conversion would have been against, not the company, which is weird to me, too. You know, They're the ones that paid for that license that they copied. Yeah, but, but here's the thing, everybody. This whole thing right here, I don't believe even happened. Okay, it's just like a moot point, really. Westerman, did. I don't think Westerman took photographs of any photographs in Baldwin's office. He was given the Frank's memorandum with all of the exhibits, which included the crime scene photographs that were released. So he merely either took photographs of his own photos or gave those digital images or allowed Robert Fortson to take pictures of them. I mean, who, we don't really know what, how this happened. But what didn't happen was that Westerman just sort of went in and broke, just totally screwed over his friend by taking photographs. Here's what happened, everybody. I think that the defense team was trying to get out their counter argument and wanted those photographs released so that they could show this, the branches that were placed on them and it would fit nicely in with their Odin theory. Okay, that's what they thought. And they came up, they concocted a plan to try to separate the leaking of them from themselves. That's why it went from Westerman to Fortson to a guy named uh, Cohen, right? And that guy, uh, Forts, uh, Fortson gave it to Cohen, and Cohen yeah, gave him to uh, various creators out there. Okay? Then an investigation was done, which they didn't even think was going to happen. And it led back to the office of Baldwin. And when it led back to, back to the office, they go, oh, my God, you guys, we need to, we need to, we're going we're gonna to lose our law, law license. And Westerman goes, okay, I'll just say that I came into your office. I took these photographs, and that's how they got out there. Because if it turns out that they knew that you handed me the Frank's memorandum with all the exhibits on it, it would be obvious that I just gave them to Fortson. Hey, thanks, wise child, and Bama forever. <laughs> you know what we should do one of these nights is like when she's doing her uh, city council YouTube show. It's not a show. It's just, it's just a live streaming of it. We'll just go ahead and we'll just put it on the screen. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny, man. You have to let us know when that is. So what did you guys think about what I just said? Doesn't that sound like a more um, just logical story 
what I just said? Because no, you can't explain to me why he would take photographs of photos he already had, right? And 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 uh, the behavior of Baldwin and the rest of them it, it proves that they tried to do that many times. Remember, uh, early on. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> you all fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, we might, but at least hey, we'll be able to see you on there. Yeah, so just remember that the prosecution wanted to have a gag order in the case. The defense said, oh, there's no need for that. We won't say anything. The next day, boom, they put out a, a, a whole press conference with, oh, our client's innocent and claiming all these different facts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then a gag order was put in place. Then just showing the pure recklessness of the prosecution, they or the defense team, I mean, they sent out a... a um, an email to a, a convict because his name was similar to somebody else and he uh, got an email that had witnesses in the case and then that person went online and shared him with everybody so then they boosted the level of how tightly the gag order needs to be but that didn't stop Baldwin and them they came up with all kinds of neato cool plans so after that, they decided, hey, we're going to put out, let's put out a memorandum in support. So first file the Frank's motion, and then we'll put out a memo in support of it and pretend that we didn't realize that it needed to be under the gag order, and we'll put it out on the server, and we'll let a few choice podcasters know about it. And then when they download that sucker, of course, then it'll be under the gag order, but it's too late. It's already out there. We can get the, the Odin stuff out there. It'll be awesome. And then weeks later, oh my God, the crime scene photos that were part of that same memorandum were released. Oh man, what are the odds of that? Those same photographs. And then when the investigation happened, it leads right back to Baldwin's office. And now the story is made up where they say, Westerman came in and took photographs when we weren't looking, shared them with a guy named Robert Fortson, who ended up killing himself. And then also he gave, uh, Fortson gave that to a guy last name Cohen. But even before the Odin document was released, Westerman had a copy of it with the images that were released. <laughs> And people want us to believe that he went into Baldwin's office and took photographs? Ah, give me a break. Jesus. No chance. No chance. Now, what are you talking about, Sarah? I don't even know what you're referring to at all. We're, we're talking about uh, Delphi. Yeah, well, you know what? The one thing, though, Plato, do we really know that he... You know, when you read that argument that McClellan put out, they, too, seem to sort of imply... Because Robert Fortson said, man, if I just come forward, I think this will all... It'll clear everything up. But he was never able to come forward because he's found dead. And man, if he'd come forward, it might have cost the career of two attorneys. And the one guy that would have made him look really bad ends up... <laughs> I mean, it's just really... I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but when you look at that, the way that was worded and how that happened, it's pretty crazy. But it also could be, you know, maybe he had mental issues and maybe, you know, he's in the military and...
Yeah, we know when. I mean, I didn't. I don't cover that on here because it's just. I knew that behind the scenes. I'm not sure why Robert Fortson would give Mark Cohen a nickel. Why? Why would Mark Cohen need money from Robert Fortson? Doesn't even make any sense. Was that the a payment made by, you know, Westerman gave Fortson 500 to then give to uh, Cohen? Yeah, but it's not, that's not something you're going to kill yourself over, Barbara. It doesn't make any sense to me that Fortson killed himself. It's a freaking leak in a case. So what, you know? I mean, it's bad, but when I say so what, I mean, like, is it really, like, it never. It always bothered me that somebody would do that. That they would actually take their own life because they leaked something in a criminal case. You know, and he was just sort of one man in a chain. But maybe he realized, oh my God, it's going to lead to Westerman. Oh, it's going to bald when it got Are they going to lose their job? Oh, because he knew the whole thing. Like Fortson seemed like he always was ahead of and knew what documents were going to be released. He really knew, um, like, the strategies, things like that. He was way ahead of everybody. It just seems way overboard to me. Uh, I don't know if he did or not. He, he is in the military, so maybe. I mean, maybe there was something. All right, so that was uh, one document right there. So I sort of see their argument they're trying to say, because he didn't really actually take the physical item. It was just a photograph of the physical item. But it just, a gag order seems like, okay, it's like, well, what would happen if somebody was given a tour of a CIA office and there was documents that were marked confidential and he took his photograph out and took photographs of him. Would that be considered anything? <laughs> or is that okay too? Because he didn't really just, he didn't grab the, the, um, the physical document. I think that's a better way to look at it. Oh, and I guess this is another one. Uh, the defendant by counsel respectfully requests this court pursuant to Indiana Code 3534-1-4 <laughs> to dismiss the information filed in the above captioned cause. In support of the motion, the defendant states the following. On November 21st, 2023, an information was filed charging the defendant with conversion and Class A misdemeanor. The information is defective under Indiana Code 3534-1-4 1-4 because the information fails to recite facts that constitute an offense and must be dismissed under Indiana code. Who's writing this one? Now it looks like he's got an attorney, Michael J. Kyle. That's Westerman though. Uh, West, uh, wherefore the defendant by counsel respectfully requests this court to set the matter for a hearing if the allegations set forth in the motion are denied by the state. If the allegations are either admitted or shown at hearing on the motion to be correct, the defendant requests that the information be dismissed. Well, I mean, so I, I, I'm kind of interested to see how that one plays out, but I'm, I'm looking forward to the hearing in March where it'll go over all this stuff. Yeah, now I guess, we could learn in March that the the copy that Westerman got didn't have the supporting images, but I, I that's not how it was worded in that last document that McLean put out. Mm -hmm. Crash. 
Hmm. All right, guys, I'm going to sh uh, show you where my progress is right now in, in here. I, st I got stuff I got to still do. Yeah, so that, those parts are working, but I, I got it. Thanks, Ivan Victor. All right, so here we go. This is how it starts off. See, those are the three girls, right? And they'll have there'll be time on here too. So that's a twelve. Uh, shit, what was it? Twelve forty-three, something like that. Twelve forty-three. You see them walking. And then they go to the bench here. So I've got another three because what you got to do when you do these animations, if you stop for a while, although there might be another way around it, you stop and then you make the other one disappear and then that one goes. I just need to make this one not here while that's moving to it. So it sits there and then I just have them kind of near the bench for a couple minutes or something. And then you'll see... Richard Allen's car drive by pretty fast here. See, there goes his car. See that? Right there. Ding, 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 ding. And then it comes in. Backs in. <laughs> that's pretty good, right? Come on, that's not bad. Hey, thanks, Peter. Mmm. And I'm not sure what's moving now on the screen. Oh yeah, so I have every six, normally it's 30 frames a second, I'm going to go with six. I've already sped it up a little bit. All right, so right here, the three girls, and then there is Richard Allen, watch. So um, this this set of three girls here isn't moving yet. I got to make them invisible. This is the one you got to focus in on over here. So they're walking. They're on the trail. And then Richard Allen's coming in. He's in black here. And this one, this isn't the one. But this is it right here. See that? And then he passes the girls right there, right next to the, the bridge. Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. The three girls, right? Hey, thanks, Ivan. And like he just kind of keeps walking down the trail. So I'm gonna fast forward it because it's like all the way. I mean, he goes all the way down there. And then I think right in this time is when, yeah, it's when, let's see. Oh, yeah, and then, then the three girls again continue walking. I think they just sort of hung out on the Freedom Bridge for a little bit. And they start walking like this. Now look at, now we've got Betsy Blair in the red vehicle here. See that? Goes underneath and looks up and sees the Lucky three girls. Give him a sucker for small dogs. And then goes around like this. This is Betsy Blair. And now it's slowing down a little bit because it's going to park here at the parking area. There you go. Then Betsy Blair gets out. Oh, wait. Yeah, so she, Betsy Blair got it. Let me go back a little bit. So Betsy Blair having yellow there. And B Betsy Blair gets out and starts walking on the trails from the, the car here. And then here comes Kelsey. She pulls up. And Abby and Libby, I have, see that's the part I haven't done yet, but they'll be getting out. 
and they'll be falling, but they're walking much slower because, and then look at, there goes Kelsey driving away after she drops them off and then drives right by there at 149, boom. It's pretty sweet. And then I'm gonna have her, she walks all the way, Betsy Blair walks all the way to the start of the bridge and look at, there. there's Richard Allen standing on platform one. And then Betsy Blair comes in and just, she just goes right to the start of the bridge and turns around and walks back. And then she walks all the way, I don't know if you can see that, but she walks all the way to the Freedom Bridge and then turns around again and comes back and then gets to her car at 2.14, but that's, that's when this black dot and Abby and Libby will be over here. I think it'll look pretty sweet. I mean, I, I could have made these bigger, but I was thinking um, I can just zoom in. You know, it's going to be clear. Let's see what it, one frame looks like. Yeah, so that's really clear stuff. Like maybe I could even be in about like that, I think. See? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like how it's all coming together and it's working. Man, you guys are still saying hello, hello, hello. That late into the show, man, that's amazing. Why would I have a 3D model of the Delphi Freedom Bridge? What a waste of time that is. Wow. <laughs> no. Hey, thanks, Kami. Are you going to have a full 3D model of the Delphi Freedom Bridge? <laughs> what? It's right there. You don't need a... See? And this is the April 2017 map, so it's exactly what it looked like. Yeah, so let me let me uh, let me show you how this works here. So this this isn't supposed to be here. Yeah, I mean it's supposed to be there, but it's supposed to straight out when the other one gets there. So watch. See so yeah, that? It gets right in it like that so this one shouldn't be visible yet no it never matters Jerry when you're late I'm not sure what you're talking about, Just Dan Oki. Nobody know, even knows what you're saying. <laughs> How is that a compliment? I, I can't make a whole 3D model of the... Uh, um, I mean, what, what, what's the point of making a 3D model of the, the Freedom Bridge? It's just sort of a... You know, it doesn't mean anything. What I'm going to do, though, is... Um, for this one over here, I'm gonna make it so that the car can go underneath it. So you can take a little piece of an image right here, if you have it still like this, and then put it back on top and it'll look like the car is going underneath. And then I'll do the same thing over here when it goes underneath, just to add a little bit. Shouldn't be too hard. I couldn't, I couldn't tell just an Oki. That doesn't sound like a compliment. It's like you seem like you were wondering if I was going to make a model of the the bridge. Huh? What was your opinion, Regina? Maybe I'll scream. What is it? Let's go find it. What is it? It's not there. 
You don't have another opinion. Maybe you do. Hold on. Let me hit the right button. No. Well, live chat. Yeah, that's the only comment. Yeah, he is guilty. Yeah. We, everybody here thinks he's guilty. Yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Confused. Oh, Maury A, you, you don't think Richard Allen's guilty at all? Oh, man, what a ridiculous comment. Wow. Whew. Embarrassing. Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't know. I thought you were talking about building the Freedom Bridge, just then, Oki. It's like, how could anybody say with a straight face that they believe that Richard Allen, they don't believe Richard Allen is guilty at all? Like, they just have some special inside information. <laughs> that is ridiculous okay ridiculous i've already shown you i mean have, hey morier have you not seen any of the videos that i've just made recently have you not seen them richard uh um richard allen has no out he has no out so you can sit there and say over and over in your mind over and over again that it is him okay and i've explained it to a point where if you're now, is there somebody else involved that was at the crime scene? I guess it's possible, okay? But there's no shot in hell that he has nothing to do with it. I think he's the killer and a lone actor at the bridge that day. And I just, I, I don't know how to, and see, that's what I'm saying. I'm always shocked because the information I put together in those two videos isn't debatable. It's not where you can go, yeah, I'm just not sure. You know, I'm still still. Well, after you're done seeing that, logic dictates that you see him exactly for what he is, the killer, okay? It's amazing. I don't know how in the hell. <laughs> to make a statement like that, though, at, at all, I don't seem guilty at all. It's just so childish, you know? Scary, actually. No, they're, they're not doing a good PR job. I mean, they did muck up the case. I mean, I guess good is sort of a, in the eye of the beholder. You know? Like, I guess you could say it's been effective that they were able to sucker people like Morier and other people into believing absolute nonsensical stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what does it got to do with this, Lynn? Right. Guilty. Wasn't a mental breakdown. Yeah, I agree. People that don't keep like we do can see how yeah, let, let me just say it really quickly again, sadly. So Richard Allen lied in October, on October 13, 2022, when he told investigators that he got there from 12 and left at 1.30. We know that he lied because he said in 2017 in February when he called the tip line, because he saw his face and he knew three girls saw him, that he better get ahead of this thing. So he called the tip line and said that he was there from 1.30 to 3.30 when he talked to Dan Doolin. And he said when he got there, when he arrived there, he parked on the side of an old building, he said in the later interviews. At first he said 
the old Farm Bureau building, which doesn't make any sense because there isn't one there. And so he said when he parked his car, he walked to the Freedom Bridge, and just upon entering the trails, he bumps into, or, you know, he walks past three girls, okay? That's, he even says in his own uh, mind, out loud, you know, he says he saw the three girls when he arrived there. Then, when he headed, uh, the, the same three girls when they were leaving, just about to get onto the Freedom Bridge, saw him too. And that was at 127, they were at a bench, and at 133, right here. So that's, that verifiably catches Richard Allen in a lie. Okay, absolutely catches him in a lie. Why, why is that? Why are you having trouble with that? See, Morier, your comment right there makes it seem like you buy into a conspiracy theory that's trying to pin it on Richard Allen because they didn't catch it back then. And that's sad. So anyways, are you listening right now? Because this all you got to do is listen to this part. It doesn't matter about what you're, you know, you're trying to sell or anything like that. So he passes the three girls. They admit he, that they, well, they saw him and he admits that, that he saw them. And he was getting there not leaving. It's verified. He is caught in a lie when he switched it to 12 to 130, which makes sense. That's what criminals do. They try to uh, muck things up, uh, lie to investigators because they, well, they know that something's significant, so they change it. And then Richard Allen then walks this direction. And he makes it all. Then he says also to investigator that he went to the Monon High Bridge. So he walked the trails. It takes 10 minutes to get from here. So this is probably about 134. He gets here at 144 and he's standing on platform one right there. And he's standing there. And Betsy Blair gets here at 147 ish. 146 he passes here, 147, maybe 147.30 right in this area. And walks this direction. Now, if you want to think, well, Richard Allen left before she got here. Well, she, he could, um, she would have had to run this direction to pass Betsy Blair. So they would have passed each other right around in this area had he left, but he didn't. Then she walks over to the, to the uh, Moon and I Bridge and sees an individual standing on platform one, which is the exact platform that Richard Allen told investigators he was standing on too. And he was wearing the exact clothing that the uh, bridge guy has on, etc. Then when Betsy Blair left, she passes Abby and Libby, somewhere in the middle here. And then uh, the next person they're gonna see is Richard Allen standing here. And Betsy Blair did a whole walk this way and all the way back and never saw that person again. So he obviously never made it back over here. Those three girls earlier at 1243 when they were over here, they didn't see anybody either until they got here when he was coming in. Again, proving he lied. So that means the guy on the bridge that Betsy Blair saw is Richard Allen also right here. And that therefore, it's Richard Allen at the end of the bridge because nobody saw him again. Abby and Libby would have ran into him. Then seven minutes uh, six minutes after the shot of Abby on the bridge, there's a video taken of the killer coming at him. And that's him, <laughs> wearing exactly the same clothing. Now, if you want to believe that there's some other guy, Richard Allen walked off into the woods quietly somewhere, just right out the end of the bridge, just went walking into the woods, and some other person showed up wearing exactly the same clothing. Now, you go ahead. All right. But hey, guys, look at that. We're only 22 something short of the normal night goal. Just as something to shoot for. All this independently corroborates my statement made without knowledge of other statements. What, Jerry? Oh, with stuff that I'm showing you right here? Right. 
<laughs> Man, I was like, I thought you were talking about yourself. Uh, my recommendation to everyone not completely familiar with Delphi is to go back and, well, there's so many live streams, it'd be pretty tough. I think once people see the full evidence, they will... Yeah, but is why isn't this enough right here to let you know that Richard Allen is the guy on the bridge? Is there anybody out there when you go over it like this thinks, well, uh, I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't, I just still can't see it. I just still, I, I can't see it, man. It's how anybody, what in that thing I just said, can you come back with and say, well, you know, how do we know that? And then come up with something. I'm just, lo I'm just wanting an answer and you never get one. It's just a feeling great. It's just a gut feeling I've got. You know, I'm paranoid about the cops, and it was... Okay, all right. All right, so I'm going to turn the auto key on, and then I've got to right... Let's see. Right at this spot. Okay, right at that moment. What's that one? That's group one, two, okay. So right when it gets underneath it right there. Actually, no, it needs to be gone the whole time. So at the start of the video, even. Okay. So clear back at the beginning. Hey, thank you, Engine HB. Hey, your first super ever on a live stream. <laughs> very cool, very cool. Make sure to all check in on the last day of the month. Hopefully we can do some... We've already given away $1,200 this month already. So hopefully we can... You know, my goal now is to be able to do another like 1800 or so out of the income from the channel. Yeah, anybody that believes the police are in on some kind of weird cover-up timeline, uh, framing it on Richard Allen, placing the bullet, and doing all this stuff are morons, okay? Really. Uh, I, I'm honest to God. Hmm. Well, I don't, I don't think you're an idiot, Maury. I just think you're not paying attention, obviously. you. I, here's what I think, Maury A, is that you got suckered by somebody and you believe uh, another YouTuber, okay? Because they're the only ones putting out stuff that you would ever see and believe, okay? That means you were watching another YouTuber, multiple YouTubers, and going, ooh, 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 yeah, wow, this is weird. Okay, and that's where you get into problems. If you stick around here, you'll be following cases where you're going to be uh, accurate like a multiple of 50 times more than those people. They are wrong almost every time, but you guys never punish them for that. You ever notice that? You're still right back there watching the same garbage over and over and over again. Okay, I'm gonna go right here and uh, so if I go to properties, where the hell is it? Oh, there it is, right there. And then right there, there's the visibility, and I'm gonna make it zero. Right there, and that little redness that came—I don't know if you can even see it—it's so small, but it's right there. So now that one's invisible, right? So we'll watch this. Oh, whoa. It only did one. <laughs> what the hell was that? It's impossible. Why would only part of it? That's crazy. Let me 
makes no sense. Yeah, but if you believe in this big conspiracy cover-up, you are a moron, okay? So, well, let's see. They planted a g bullet at the crime scene at the time of the murders, but waited five years to pin it on the guy that they stole the bullet from to eject the bullet from. Because the bullet's been, they've had the bullet since the day one. It wasn't found later, buried somewhere. Oh, he is cute, uh, George. Don't forget that part. I don't understand what happened here. Like, why, why did that do that? Hmm, that's weird. That just doesn't make any sense. Why would it make just two of those? <laughs> there's no, there's no, it's wild. That makes absolutely no sense. Zero. It's one of those things I can't explain. Man, what the hell? Absolutely crazy. Is it this one? But Gray Yee. Richard Allen is cute and cuddly. Vomiting face, vomiting face, vomiting face, vomiting face, vomiting face. Yeah, vomiting face, vomiting face. Oh yeah, he's he's gorgeous. Especially when he started looking more like Schmeagle. Hey, thanks, Jerry Walker. You make uh, too much sense. People love that fantasy bullcrap. Keep it real. Love your voice when being sarcastic. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you do, Zozo? No way. Yeah, so I need to have this thing be invisible. And it was weird. So let me try that again. What in the hell? So I had this group property. If I went zero, the whole thing should be... Okay, it's all gone. Oh, nice. Okay, that's good. Chewbacca? Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. Yeah, cool. So you make right too much sense. There. People love that fantasy bull crap. Keep it real. <laughs> I love your voice when being sarcastic. Hey, I like the way that was read. That was sweet. I li you make too much sense. People love that fantasy bull crap. Keep it real. I love your voice when being sarcastic. Let me see if I can do it. Hold on. You make too much sense. People love that fantasy bull crap. Keep it real. 
I love your voice when you're being sarcastic. Hey, that was pretty good, Timmy. It sounded just like that computer. What's the difference? Ah, good point, good point. Mm. Yeah, wow. Right, I think I'm about, this might just work here. Property, and then make it one. Oh yeah. <laughs> so now it's not there. See that? Now watch when it gets there. It stops. Oh, it p appears too quick though right there. See that? All right. I have to go fix that. Alright, so this just needs to be slid over right there a little bit. Oh, but what is the other one? Mm. It's so close. Come on. <laughs> Man, hold on. I just gotta get this. See, it's so tedious, this kind of stuff. It's crazy. Hey, thank you so much, Lisa Wilkerson. It's your birthday today? Oh my God, well, hey. Whose birthday, birthday is it? It's Lisa Wilkerson, aren't you watching the show? No, no I was watching, watching Fantasy, Fantasy Island. Island. Fantasy Island? Who the hell, why, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, Z plane, Z plane. Oh my God, Mary Lou, Jesus. All right, so anyways, you gotta sing a happy birthday for Lisa Wilkerson. All right. She's awesome. Yeah, she is, isn't she? Happy birthday to Lisa Wilkerson. Happy birthday to Lisa Wilkerson. Happy birthday to Lisa Wilkerson. Hey, what happened? Hey, look at that game! You know, uh, Mary Lou, that one wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad at all, okay? Alright. Well, thanks, Gray. That's the first time you've ever complimented me. Well, I was lying, but oh, I mean, um, it was, it was great. Gosh, Gray, you're not very nice. That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> All right. Well, happy birthday, Lisa Wilkerson, and Peppermint. Just get over yourself for five seconds, okay? We were singing happy birthday to somebody, okay? We've been doing this for years. You know, if you if you didn't if you haven't been around, I'm sorry, but uh, we don't need the whiners. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, see, it's right in that same spot. Okay, I could do that a little bit later. Ah, man, there's just this little timing. Oh, that looks pretty good. Yeah, what about that? Oh, it got a little bit bigger somehow. But. <laughs> well, geez, thanks, Lisa. Geez. Well, thank you. Uh, man. 
Happy birthday! Hey, you don't have to do it again. I mean, <laughs> anyways, thank you so much. Well, it's your birthday, so but thank you for supporting the channel. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, so I think that's going to work now. Let's see. So check it out. Here we go. Those are the three girls. And when they're walking, they're, they're going really slow. They, they took forever down here. So, But look, see now that the other one's not there anymore. So it worked pretty good. See? Now I got to get rid of this one now. Even though it switches over to that, it shouldn't be visible because that's them when they go over the bridge and then they go right over the State Road 25 bridge and that's when Betsy Blair's car goes underneath there. See that? Thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you. I know, but I, maybe I need to be more entertaining or something. Lisa Wilkerson, she said, very welcome. My favorite channel to watch, Only Facts with Gray. You know, I, I do speculate, though, on the facts. Remember the whole... Uh, you know what's funny is, like, that statement that we came up with all those years ago, the fill the box with facts, then think outside of it, has become so much more appropriate. It seems like we were almost ahead of our time when we were saying that, right? I mean, because it didn't really mean anything. I mean, it meant, you know, because we do facts here and people go, Gray, you need to spec, you're not speculating enough or, you know, whatever the hell it was. And it was just like, well, I do speculate. People always say, Gray, you don't think outside the box. They say that all the time. And I, I think if you, the people out here that have watched my show over the years, you probably realize that's any, that statement is any, anything but the truth. <laughs> I think outside the box all the time. In fact, I think outside the box and I just, I'm immediately able to uh, throw something out when I know that there's really no shot at that. It's a waste of time. But um, I like to get as many of the factual elements of a case put together, then start thinking a little out on the edges there, you see? If, if you like the people who just immediately jump in with conspiracy theories without even a shred of information, then, man, you are absolutely wasting your time unless it's just sort of like you're watching Survivor or something. You know, it's just, hey, hey, boy, this is fun and entertaining. But... I always notice that people comment like it's real. You know, they're like, wow, this is great. And it's never accurate, you know, ever. It's unbelievable. All right, so I got to get make this one disappear before the other one shows it. Right when the other one's about to show up. Right here. Right there. Two, three, four, and that right then is when it will get there. So this is when I could probably so this could still be invisible right now. So now we'll make this zero. And that means it wouldn't be there right before it got there. There you go. Yeah. And then and one and one, two, three, four, five, six. I can just go there. Properties again, and then one. And now it's sitting there with the other one. Yeah, boom, that's perfect. Look at that. <laughs> See, now you can't see that the other one was there, and it'll just look like the same set took off again. See? Yeah. 
All right, so here's where we're at so far on this. I don't have, I'm at the point where I'm about ready to put in Abby and Libby walking and they'll pass um, Betsy Blair here in a minute. So let's just go back to the beginning. Let me take off the auto key thing here. So it kind of starts off, well, it starts off over here at 1243 with these the girls right here. These three girls, there's actually four, but I'm just doing the three just because that's what everybody refers to them as. And they walk up and they stop at a bench and that's 126. But at the same moment, Richard Allen's car is already heading down this road right here. It's going to be going pretty quick too. So there it is, goes by the cemetery, and the girls are at the bench, 127 passes the Hoosier Harvest door right there, then it's going to park right here at the abandoned CPS building, and then I just kind of have them sitting there for a moment, because I, you know, just the amount of time it takes to park correctly and get out, you know, it's going to be like, he gets there at 128, and I get him have him getting out of his car at 130. So let me, I'll just there it is. So there he's getting out of the car, and there he is walking. I'm gonna go down that trail that I showed you guys on the 360 degree camera. You guys remember that one? How about you, Jay? Do you remember that? <laughs> I'm engaging Jay Case, the inventor of Jay Case Vision. Anyways, it comes over like this. And then those girls, the three girls who were at that bench when he drove by, are now walking. They're just absolutely hanging around. They're not speeding around to do anything. It takes them a long time to do anything. They're just chatting, talking, stopping. And then right here, he passes those three girls. They saw him, and he saw them, right? I think it's kind of cool just looking at it like, like the way I'm doing it right here. I might do a di two different videos on it or something. So there's him. He's just going to walk down the trail. He's alone. There isn't another soul on this trail. See? I'll probably have it in more in like this so you can see it, you know? And then maybe pan out sometimes. I mean, I think people can still see it. I mean, I could have made it bigger, but I was trying to make it not look way bigger than the the trails. And plus, it's clear. So I'll just speed it up a little bit for this part. And I'll probably speed it up even on a video. And he makes it all the way down, and there he is. That's platform one right here. And he walks out and he stands there, okay? Then right around that time is when Betsy Blair shows up here and parks her car and then she gets out. I have her in yellow. She gets out, starts walking the trail and she doesn't pass anybody that looks like Richard Allen. And, and look at that, there is Kelsey's car pulling up and that's about the time difference when Abby and Libby got out, but they too were like the three girls. They, they weren't hustling to be somewhere. They're just walking around. They may have even uh, loitered around in this area for a little bit. And so they would have gotten out and they're just kind of walking like this. And then Betsy Blair is heading towards the bridge down here. So I'll just speed that up a little bit. And she makes it right to the start of the bridge which is right there, and then just turns around and walks away, but saw Richard Allen standing on platform one right there. And then she walks back up this way, and right around in this place is about when she passes Abby and Libby. And given the fact that she's exercising and they're just walking around, taking pictures and stuff, it makes sense. And so she, may, she got way more ahead of them and passes them about right in the area that she's in right now. This is where Abby and Libby were walking. And so that'll be in the, I'll be adding that in. And then she, which is crazy, because I'm just gonna have her moving 
even though it's not even being rendered or filmed or anything. Like, I think she went over to the Freedom Bridge. It matches perfectly the timing. And then walked to the Freedom Bridge and then went back to the car. And she got back to the car at 2.14. Now, back at that same time frame, that's when Abby and Libby will be on this end of the bridge. And this black figure here, I'm going to have him moving over to here while Abby and Libby make it to the bridge. And then he comes back this direction. Do you guys, are you guys okay with the size? I mean, is that okay? Like, I mean, it is kind of small, but it seems like if I zoom in a little bit like that, you can see it. I don't know. What happens if I make one? Let me just save everything. If I make those balls bigger, does it still move the same? See what happens. I don't know, and I could do that. But you guys think it? Um, now make them red. That's not a bad idea. Because it's it's kind of hard to see the black in there. What do you mean you can't see? I mean, I could have that. I was just kind of trying to have him match the car, but he wasn't really wearing... I don't know. Maybe if I make them blue, like light blue or something, that way it'd be sort of like the jeans, kind of. How about that? You can see that. So you think bigger like that? Maybe like half of that. How about like that? Blue balls. Come on, Timothy. Jesus. Hey, thanks. Be kind and mindful. See, Matt, Timothy has two comments in here. Ah, nuts. I can't see. Then he says, uh, blue balls. I mean, he's referred to nuts twice. Okay. Uh, we got to look into that a little bit. And three times, he says, bigger balls, um, uh, nuts, I can't see, and then he said, blue balls, okay? He's, he's, he's obsessed. What is going on, Timothy Cecil? <clears throat> Rough week for you, man? All right, so I guess I'll, if I'm making that bigger, does it work? How about with the cars? Can that be? Does it still work the same? Let's see. Hold on. Yeah, it's not too bad. I would have to have it go underneath that bridge. Slowing down a little bit.
Do you think that's better, just that size right there? Because now if I'm in like that, you can see them better. All right, let me make <coughs> math. I got to make the three girls bigger then. Oops. Why did it slide over when I did that? All right. I don't know. I think I'm going to leave them the same. Because it's already kind of big. There are three balls there. <laughs> I can't even talk anymore. Three balls. Man, I've heard of those stories, but... Ah, man, this is... See, now it's going to ram into the building, though. Oh, well. That's all right, I guess. It'll bug me, though. So why did it move on the thing like that? Nah. That's too much going on with that. Oh wait, so now there's a problem with that. Ah, God. There's always a problem when you do stuff like that. Now I just realized that when Betsy Blair... No, I think hers is one motion. So that might... You know, what I was thinking of doing on this is um, to do a uh, like put a red border that shows where he is. Like, so the rest of it'll be dark, but it'll be where is Richard Allen, and then increasingly move over and shade in an area over here. And then when the girls come, he's right there. And then Betsy Blair also proves that he never came back this way so she's right he's inside of that area right there and then the video on the end of the bridge makes it even further over here and then the you know so it's like this little sliver including the crime scene it just kind of keeps narrowing it down i think it'll be kind of cool i'm gonna do that now what are you talking about You guys hear about those those people? I, I got the, somebody sent me an email. Somebody brought it up yesterday, but somebody sent me an email a couple days ago about those uh, guys got arrested for was, uh, in another country. I think there were there were two guys on a boat. It sounded just like that other case that we did with those twelve people that died on a boat uh, up in uh, I think it was in Alaska. It was that uh, boat, remember those eight people? But these two, um, like rich people, had this boat, and these three, his killers got on the boat and like massacred them, and they haven't found their bodies yet. But uh, and just like retirement is crazy. They were just having a good time, hanging out. What are you talking about? What shooting are you referring to? Ah, oh, Jesus.
Oh, now this car is going to run into the other one. Oh, it's so small compared to that one. <laughs> Jeez. I even made it bigger, too. Hmm. I think that one's too big. I don't know. I'm cur all these problems are happening now, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna close it. I'm not sure. I can change the color, but I don't know if I can do size like that. Hello. Oh no, did I save that? Oh, oh good, no. I think I'll just make, if I make him lighter, I might be good enough. kind of sucks because if you you start changing something then there's all those other times where you switch characters but it looks the same and then you got to fix those ones and you know I was just trying to get it to be more like I could be zoomed in like this and then at some point I guess the one problem would be if I need a wider shot I mean it would be kind of cool to do one that was like this that had the entire, like, just like that. Well, not quite. Like, about like this. And then you could see them if they were bigger. Yeah. Are you talking about something that just happened? Timothy Cecil, or is this a long time ago? Oh, a week ago, somebody killed your roommate? Well, how come he didn't come, like, send me a message or something? <laughs> Jesus. I can't, I'm having a hard time catching up. I thought you said it just happened this week. You said it's only been a week. Yes, it's been ten, oh, ten days. Okay. I thought you said ten years. 
I haven't heard about any of that. Is there even a story out there in the media or? I mean, where were you, Timothy? Okay, but you never shared any of that with me, Timothy Cecil. I mean, why, why wouldn't you like, hey, you know, I'm a moderator on a channel that does true crime, and I've already got the PCA and everything, but yeah, I'm not going to share it. It happened in Colorado Springs, okay. And it's in the local news, but the shooter was black, so of course it's not covered. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was a... A white shooter killing black people would have been a massive story all over the country. But if it's a black shooter killing black people, they don't seem to care as much. Which is strange, isn't it? Well, send me the information so I can take a look at it. I'll talk about it if it's something that you know looks interesting or something. <clears throat> Where were you, Timothy? How did you survive or like? Oh, I know how that one got smaller because that was the next one. All right, I guess I'm about to try to make these things bigger. <laughs> I don't know why I was thinking about that, but. Oh, that's crazy. And everybody's so sleuthing up that story. It's already happened. It's done, you know. Yeah, it shouldn't matter, Regina, uh, Regina but, uh, Regina, but it, they always say it. They always do it, though. I mean, it, it, whether or not you say it or not, the media, uh, CNN, MSNBC, etc., it doesn't matter... If they don't care if black people shoot other black people. They also don't care if a black person shoots a white person. The only time they care, and it's just true, I'm sorry, you guys, but when a white person or a white cop shoots a black person, then they have something they can sell and turn it into a race-baiting conversation. And I think everybody knows that's true, but, uh, you know, we always have to listen to, why is this not fair, Gray? I remember watching... Hey, thanks, Ozzy Trisha. You know, I did hear, I actually did hear about that one. <laughs> yeah, it was over so fast that I just was like, oh, okay. Yeah, in Colorado, yeah, that's funny. I didn't even, I don't know the details really, but I saw and there was another shooting, but then they... It was like over quick. Thank you, Ozzy Trish. Okay, I'm going to try to do this. All right, let's just do one item at a time. The three girls, the first one. We go back to the beginning. All right, so if I make them... So let's go to like 125. All right, so that's bigger. Moving down. And then you go to the bench, and then see how then it flips over to that smaller version. But see that one, maybe I can just make that the same exact 125 and will it work if it doesn't work i'm not gonna do it ah 
<laughs> yeah, it wasn't bad. That that looked pretty good. Hold on. I get the the transition. That was pretty damn good. Look at that. Watch. So these are two different sets here. Ah, uh, I gotta fix that again. God dang it. So that must have affected that somehow. Looked like it was pretty good for a second there. You see how tedious this kind of stuff is? It's not really just simple. I don't know why it just disappears there though. Oh, it's clocking, it's doing something. Something's not it's gonna crash here in a second, I think. What the hell? Yeah, something is just wacky right this second. Ah, screw it. I'll have to do it later. <laughs> I'm not going to save that, though. I don't know what's going on there. No idea. No idea. some income while there got some income while there sucks he had a future and was stupid and yeah huh what are you talking about Regina patience with art is understandable no patience with uh, us though now especially comments like that Jerry see Jerry I always think of you as a troll you know that and a lot of people do too they message me saying not sure about that Jerry person. And see that? Look at your comment right there. You see how stupid that is? Like you just want attention on yourself. Patience with art is understandable. No patience with us, though. <laughs> I'm so clever and funny. Look at all my troll buddies laughing at my comment. <laughs> I'm so funny. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, 
I'm trying to figure out how he was a junior in accounting when I only saw him for one semester. Who knows? All right, guys, I'm going to take off. Uh, we're obviously not focused on any of this stuff, so send me the information on the, uh, if you got it, Timothy, on that. It'd be kind of interesting to check it out. Maybe you can call in when we talk about it. You can tell us what you're, tell us about it. Yeah, well, you know what? Sometimes, Jerry, you don't need to type in what you're thinking because a lot of times it's really kind of stupid. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, No, I didn't finish it. I was trying to make everything larger, and it got kind of complicated. So I'm going to go back. Kind of went over it before. All right, so anyways, thank you to Plato, Eugenie, Rhonda Brand. Oh, by the way, hold on. Let me gift... Uh, Gift some memberships tonight. We made it to the the goal. So. And there we go. Who's out there? Seems like everybody watching is a member. Well, oh, look at that. Alley Cat. Alley Cat. <laughs> you left again. Martina uh, Davis. Crystal Tucker. Stacy Cole. And the silver leaf. There you go. Okay. Well, uh, let me get back to the thank you to start over again. Plato. Eugenie, and let's see, uh, Rhonda Brand, Your Gypsy, Kubi, K. Me, Candley Woodward Stone, Peggy O, Barbara Town, Joseph Brennan, She Sells Seashells, Misha, uh, Who's Your Mama, 11 Months, thank you. Sirius Black, J Case, Cat Eye, K Me, Just Ann Oki, Ivan Victor, Wise Child, Bama Forever with the Cat Eye, Ivan Victor, Peter Mmm, Ivan Victor, K Me, N Jin H B, George Leonard, Jerry Walker, Lisa Wilkerson, whose birthday it was, sent two cat eyes in a row. But happy birthday to you. <laughs> but you gave me a birthday present. Uh, be kind and mindful. Ozzy, Trisha. Hey, are you still out there, Lisa Wilkerson? Are you still out there, Lisa Wilkerson? Calling Lisa Wilkerson. Are you still out there? What do, you, what do you mean, what are the different colors? What are you, what are you talking about? This is the Koberger map here. Like I said, if I was... Yeah. Yeah. And welcome, Crystal Tucker, Stacy, the Silverleaf, Martina, and Alley Cat for the 900th time. 
No, she must have taken off to enjoy her birthday. There were, there were just different times. Uh, yeah, the blue is the route south, you know, heading out. The red also does that. You know, it's just something I was measuring or, or something at a certain time. I don't usually have them all turned on. But, I mean, if you pan out, this is all the stuff that I've <laughs> put on this case. I mean, it looks like a... It's ridiculous. Look at this. Even in, even even over in uh, Pullman there. Is she here? Uh, I guess she took a... Well, if you're out there, Lisa Wilkerson, send me your address. I'll send you... Oh, you might I might have it in on uh, a program out there, the place that I get the... I'll send you the Chloe notebook for an actual birthday gift. All right? I'll just... I'll figure it out. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for being here tonight. I don't know if the... I don't think the dogs are... Oh, they got the camera fixed on them. There you go. Maybe you guys can get a little look, look at them for a couple minutes. Boy, aren't they exciting. You ever you ever think that Blue can hear well? I don't think he has any problem hearing a damn thing. What about you? Blue's always got to deal with Chloe. Just rambunctious. Let's see what he's doing. It looks like his heart rate, or his beat, or breath rate's good. Look at that. One, two, three, four. Man, that's easily like 30, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely it seems like he needs a cigarette. Mm. I don't know if I got I'm not going over it tonight, Timothy, so I'll check later. Hey, Siggy Thurston. <laughs> All right, anyways. Thanks everybody. Thanks for being here. And we'll see you uh, tomorrow. And uh, thanks for, you know, everybody supporting the channel tonight. That was really nice of you. Thank you very much. All right. And we'll see you tomorrow. Oh, wait. Uh, I'm going to come on. I'm doing the Koberger hearing tomorrow. I think it should still be on that same YouTube channel. Yeah. Judge John Judge. A man who was never not going to be a judge. Yep, so we'll be doing that tomorrow. And this is a place you want to watch it. Not some, you know, oh, look at that. You know, she's saying that, oh, that bastard. You know, they're just going to, you always get people there. They hate the prosecution in the Delphi case and the uh, Idaho 4 case. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. And as I always say, until next time, be safe out there. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and a five, and a six, and a seven, and an eight. And a nine, yeah, and, a and a ten, and an eleven, and a twelve, and a thirteen, and a fourteen. And during this whole time, I have not seen one job. person that is a crime dissector. Rejecta. I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya on a stretcher if you try and play me hey, like an old projector. Crime sector is my nectar. Professor Gray is gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector, and I'm always gonna be a pup protector. Fool deflector, interceptor, and I'm meaner than a specter with a vector on his pector. With all respect, y'all. Just remember, I've a temple for conjecture. I have no agenda. I'm no pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight without the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send you on a mission to reveal the true offender.
Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Talk to you. All right, everybody. Thank you. Wow, that was so chipper. Normally you go, Good night, everybody. Gee. Well, I'll do it now. Good night, everybody. Gee. Well, it doesn't sound very authentic now because you already said it really enthusiastically and everybody was like, oh, wow, look at that. Mary Lou's really excited that time. And then you went, oh, let me do it the bad way. I mean, you, just, you, know, you see how ridiculous that is, Mary Lou? Gosh, Gray, that isn't very nice. I tried my best. Well, your best isn't good enough. Wow. <laughs> All right. See you guys later. And be safe out there. Oh, and happy birthday one last time to Lisa Wilkerson. Yeah, happy birthday. I, I just said that, Mary Lou. Well, I wanted to say it too. But why? Because I wanted to. Oh, okay. <laughs>